Joining us now is publisher of Guru Magazine and the author of Democracy and the Untold Story of June 12 is Chief Abimbola Bodering. He'll be discussing the June 12 struggle and how it's shaped the developments in Nigeria's politics. Good afternoon and welcome to Arise News. Good afternoon. Pleasure nice to have you. Yes, yeah. yeah, so you wrote this um, book, Democracy and the Untold Story of June 12. I would just like to ask you about some of the things that might be, that might have been untold so far that we don't even know about that you might be privy to. Thank you very much. I I'm a politician. Well, I, I started politics nineteen officially nineteen ninety two with the SDP and uh, with the, the later um, chief Alamidi uh, Adedubu um, in the battle. Apparently, my father was the founder of the Ibarra People's Party as far back as the early 50s, with an, an action group with the late Abafema Wolowo. And he went to the, the, the parliament, West Island Parliament, 1952, from his party. It's comprised of uh, people like Adi, Adi Labu and other Akloye. And my father um, now formed with his friend, action group, and, if, and he went to Queen's Coalition. So Queen's Coalition now, um, he is Kashim Brahim, mm. and the Addis Ali Rami were the three people who were chosen by parliament to represent Nigeria officially at the Constitution in 1953 and in England. So, um, I've been, police have been part of me, it will be discussed all, all the time. So, what happened was that um, when I came back from the US in 1980, I, I was staying in a papa with my father in his, his house. Then I, when my wife came, I, I, I moved to another flat in Napapa. And then uh, I came in one night, I saw a man. Um, I never knew him before. Um, he was lying down, my father was sitting down by the pool, you know. And of course, um, I was wondering who's this guy? And that was the late MKO. Now, NK came to him because apparently NK was uh, with the MPN at that time. And he was, um, you know, he, um, he was working against the chief, um, chief above him, Aulo. And he came to my father as a, a friend of Aulo and a friend of Yubas, uh, a, a leader to come and speak to, on his behalf, to his, to, to, to his colleagues, Aulo, one of them. So, Abela was there. So, after, before he left, he, 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 he greeted me and said, How are you doing? I said, I'm fine. He said, Okay, I'm such a person. And uh, she come and see me in my office, you know. That was about 1980 or so, 1981. So I thought, no, fine. So I asked my father, who's this guy? He said, MK Bella said, he's a politician and also a very successful businessman. So they told me that he came because he wanted me to, to assist him to, 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 to speak to his people. Um, um, on, 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 on the, on the of, of course, he was also a friend of my late uncle, later, later Olu Abodani who's uh, you know, 20 years, 22 years younger than my dad. So anyway, so that was the story. I, I went to see him, you know, I've been like a couple of times, but um, Jibo was there in his office. Then at that one, um, we used to meet at the Ministry of Defense because I was also in, into, into, into uh, defense industry. I was trying to equip Nigerian armed forces to be strong. So anyway, it all started politically in 1992 at the Banner, at Aladi, at, 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 uh, residence. Apparently, I did was uh, like a like political son of my father, and uh, my father gave me first uh, the first land to build the house, and all the land the monetary that belonged to, to my dad. And when he passed away, I was in charge. So I did was looking for me. So I came one night, and one day, um, um, late afternoon, I saw somebody at the in the, in um, Calopi. It was MK Biela. And I said, wow, I, I was supposed to see him. I, we held each other. I said, how are you doing? He said, I'm fine. He said, he's here for politics. And that he um, apparently wants to run for president. But the, the fear was that he knew that um, the um, uh, convention was going to be difficult for him because they had more delegates from north than the south. So uh, that, but he came to talk about Adidibu because Adidibu is an express man politically. I said, okay, fine, we, can, we, we, now, we now went to Shivadidubu. That's how we all started. Mm. So we started politics in a big way. And every time 
I mean, people like uh, the family, the, the Miss Abella, they don't they don't all know me. Yeah, but would I, would I, would I, they all know me. That I've, I've always with Abella. I did do some nice things, things to him. And that's another guy who was involved with uh, um, Chief Ajibola, who's Abella's lawyer. He's, he's alive now. He's the Otun Balogun of Banaland. And so we were, four of us were the highest you know, at that time. So we campaigned everywhere, all over the place. And then BC was in charge of the um, Western Nigeria, doing the side of the East. And the late Kudi was in charge of the, of the North. So that's what it was, it was arranged. So uh, we, we campaigned all over the place. And then the, the great main um, issue was that the day we, we met at Joss for the convention. That was the untold story. Now, we started, we started the, the, the com, um, voting at the convention. And of course, uh, let's, uh, I mean, uh, uh, Kikikbe, Babakana was the, was the chairman of the party, the SDP, and uh, Atiku was uh, also in the party, but representing Lady Adua. Lady Adua was the one that first went the first won the uh, convention before it was uh, cancelled, you know. So the election was going on, and of course, we realized that uh, Abela was, wasn't going to win in the election. So, and then I did we said, well, listen, let's just go to Yadua and convince him to ask Atiku to, to step down for Abiola. So some people went with him to 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 yeah um at, um she would address residents uh, in Joss why we stayed in in a, um, at the venue as we were the delegates to to make um, to convince people to vote Abiola so on coming back luckily Yadua asked at Atiku to step down for Abiola so definitely so they are, then then uh, all the delegates that were with him they voted for Abiola. That was the other one convention, otherwise it wouldn't have won. A lot of people don't know that. That's the you know, story. Well, now they do because you've told us. <laughs> yes, definitely. I mean, thank you so much for setting the pace of this conversation. You know, there's so much history, and I, I really believe that uh, every June 12, we will continue to find out more stories about the legacy that, uh, you know, MQ Abiola, the little um, MQ Abiola left behind. But we've heard a lot of speeches, even just before you came on, we, we, know, we heard the speech from uh, his son, Leko Abiola, and then even before that, the deputy uh, governor, Obafi, Femi Hamzat as well. But uh, more importantly, uh, this morning we did hear the speech from uh, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, who described uh, the late MQ Abiola as a symbol of democracy. Now, looking back at the June 12 struggle and the annulment of the 1993 presidential election, how would you assess the significance in shaping Nigeria's political uh, landscape and democratic journey, especially as it relates to this year's 2023 general elections, which some would say wasn't uh, democratic. Well, I think um, June 12th is a watershed. It is, it is historical in the history of Nigeria. It was the best election ever in the history of Nigeria. It was free and fair because I drove around uh, with the Abela's lawyer to see what was happening. And we drove to, straight to Abela's house in uh, um, Ikeja. And we were with him, me, and the lawyer, Abela, and the uh, his, his daughter, Wula, 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 who's uh, Mrs. Kukuna. Four of us, she's she alive, she, one of us were together getting the results. And uh, Abel was a man who, who felt so much for the masses. You know, he, he, he always tells us stories about how he, he was, he came from a humble beginning to, to, be, to where, where he was, was the richest person in Africa. And then, the election was so, so good. Everybody felt bad. Everybody felt good. And then, you know, all over the nation, people voted for him because he, he has done so much for many people. He told me once that uh, he, he learned about 400 students in school, scholarship. So the, the June 12th is, is, is what we have, all, all of us have strived to repeat in this nation, a free and fair election whereby everybody is happy. You know, and, and, and I think one of the things that reminisced with, or that I, you know, that I stood out for me when I looked at some of the publications today is that what makes today's celebration peculiar is the fact that notable figures that were part of the struggle, like the current president, 
you know, is he's the chief host of today's events. That's on one hand. Now, regarding the current president, there's a lot of expectation when it comes to, you know, implementing the tenets for which um, June 12 represents. What do you expect to see from him sooner rather than later? Well, first of all, I expect that he will um, minimize or eradicate poverty in this nation. There's so much suffering. I, I'm not happy about it because I... My family, the abandoned family, we used to employ labels. Mm -hmm. I've provided tons of Nigerians' job at my shopping mall in Bolade. Tons of Nigerians. So, expect the president to look at the poverty in this nation. Also, there's a lot of things that have been done. Corruption must be minimized because people have taken Nigeria for granted. They were taking money as they like. Children of Nigeria are missing. I, I cannot believe, you know, the, the, the America said, Unbelievable corruption. It's an issue of mankind. There's no country where people can't waste money like this. So you have to find, find a way to stop corruption. And Nigerians all together have to love Nigeria. This is our country. We have no other country than this. We have to put ourselves together and stop corruption. And people bring back the money they have stolen back to Nigeria and tell the developed nation. Because we. God gave us everything because we are supposed to be representing the black, 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 black world. We are leaders of black world, and look at what we're doing with our resources. So the president must do everything. Education is very important. Healthcare was very important, you know, and the security, which is extremely important because you have to be secure before you can do anything. I went to the the Kansas people like Jarab Abangida himself, Jarab Martin Luther King. Uh, Admiral Yako, what, what I did in the 80s for Nigerian Air Forces. I came from US and I tried to introduce so many, so many equipment. You know, as air defense system, red that's everything. But at that time, maybe people were not uh, ready what, what, what I was trying to do. I knew that Nigeria is talking tough, talking leaders, you have to be strong. You have spoken about how. Um, you, it, it's, it's important for this current administration to, of course, work on uh, corruption. And you also spoken about the influence that the, you know, the June um, 12 um, uh, presidential uh, elections, of course, had on Nigeria's history. Now, the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, uh, Peter Obi, is of the opinion that Nigeria's destiny remains uncertain. He actually described the nation's democracy right now as being deeply troubled and in a precarious state. I want to know what your assessment is of uh, the current state of uh, Nigeria's democracy, even as we celebrate uh, Democracy Day today. Well, you know, in life, there are people that are for it, there are also other people that are against it. So that is expected. The case is in the court now. And I, I expect that the court will do justice to, to it. So by, by, by the time, we are all Nigerians. So no matter what happens, we should, we should you know, um, we can argue. We can disagree. We can disagree to agree. And then every day, I believe that uh, if we work together as a Nigerian, we, create, we, we make a great nation. So let us see what happens. You know, no matter what happens, let us just, just to solve it amongst ourselves and we move on. Indeed. Now, we, you know, of course, there are numerous events going on around the nation regarding June 12. But two statements that were made by one by the late M.K. Abiola's son, who was calling for the death penalty for those involved, those found to be guilty of kidnapping, banditry and terrorism, saying we can't progress um, uh, uh, in, uh, in terms of our economy if that's not implemented. That's on one hand. And then we listened to the deputy governor of Lagos State, Obafemi Hamzat, who was also saying that, you know, we need to get better at de-emphasizing religion if Nigeria's democracy will progress. When you pair these two together, I'm wondering if you agree with these um, two gentlemen in terms of how we can proceed as a nation. I think I, I, I can agree with them. It says that uh, people are being kidnapped and uh, we need to do something about that. Therefore, I think we, I believe that maybe death, death penalty should be, be adequate. At the same time, we want to know why they are killing, kidnapping people. I think it's, 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 it's because of poverty. People are suffering, and they feel that, okay, 
I force you to take some money from you. So first of all, you have to have a strong armed forces, very strong. And then you will sit down and say, why are people kidnapping this? Because it was not, it was, it was, it was in the history of Nigeria to keep kidnapping. So we have to find a way to, to solve the problem with the people. Poverty must be eradicated. That's what is causing this. And then strong armed forces. So if we, if we are going to bargain with people, we have to be strong. So, and then um, the issue of uh, religion, I believe that uh, we all serve one God, whether you're a Christian or Muslim or whatever. Uh, uh, you know, we, we should put it aside and be, we put ourselves as ourselves as Nigerians. After all, Christianity brought to our, our, our country to, to Europe, also Middle East brought, it, brought the um, Islam. And we are all serving one God. There's only one God. There's no, there cannot be two gods. One God, and we must all serve together. So put that together, and let's have a, a good nation. Well, since you're a politician, <laughs> I'm going to poke a bit. Why is this now being? Why is it now being said that we need to de-emphasize religion at this time? Do you think that there is a motive, since it's coming from the the um, deputy governor of, of Lagos State? Do you think that this is something that's just? Um, that, do you think there's a context? in terms of it being able to favor the party some way, somehow, or is this just a genuine statement with no motive from your viewpoint? Well, I don't know. I, I, I'm not <laughs> in their minds, but I believe that uh, in politics, people do things just to favor them, you know? But I think it should, it should, it should not be a problem because we are serving one God. I don't know why people fight against over religion. Whether you're Christian or Muslim, it's one God. You can, you can serve him one way, I serve him another way. I'm a Christian, and uh, I serve him my own way. Religion is a big deal, as we've seen, especially in this race for the 10th um, National, National Assembly. Assembly. <laughs> it's a big deal. Yeah, it, 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 but it, it, shouldn't, it shouldn't be a big deal for us. One God, and that's, well, that's what we are serving. Let us, let us work together as a Nigerian and leave God, to let people, other people to serve God as they like. It should be like that. All right, then. I mean, you've spoken about, even when I put across the question to you about what you think uh, regarding the current state of Nigeria's democracy, you said we need to just wait and see how it plays out. So yes. looking ahead, right, uh, how can the lessons and the spirit of uh, the June 12 struggle continue to inspire positive political reforms to strengthen democratic institutions and foster national unity in Nigeria? Well, like I said, June 12 is... It's, it's still historical. It was free and fair. We should, all of us should be trying and do something like that again, always. Election, be free and fair. Because after all, we are, we are brothers. I've been all over Nigeria on the road, but I did not. I, I traveled just to see Nigeria. It's a beautiful country. I, I went to school in California, uh, and the first and second degree, and uh, it was a beautiful place. But Nigeria is equally beautiful. So we should not tell anything divide us. We should work together, unify the institution, because we need to put Nigeria together so that we can, uh, you know, we can be proud of being Nigerians. Well, there was also, there was just a statement from, I think uh, that was the President General of the Middle Belt Forum, that's Dr. Beatrice Pogu. He says he's not, he's not necessarily convinced that we had a winner at the, you know, February 25th uh, presidential election and that he doesn't want to contribute to any of the celebrations in today's um, events. For people who share his own viewpoint, what, what do you have to say to them? Well, I'd like to be there, please be there, so please, let's, let's, let's win the courts. Because if you have, a, if you have a, a system, if you, definitely there's nothing in life, you can't please everybody, whether it's right or wrong, we don't know yet. Let's let the court decide, you know, who, uh, and we can take, move forward, you know. But God's get some, some people like it, some people are happy, some people are not happy. It's, 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 it's normal. It's normal in the history, in everything we do in life. People are not happy. Some people are, not, are happy. It's, not, it's normal. Let's see what happens. Okay. If, right, we, we are one, one Nigeria. Did <laughs> 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 you just say amen? <laughs> Take me to church, Cynthia. <laughs> All right, then. Thank you so much uh, for uh, being here. Of course, talking about uh, publisher of Guru Magazine and author Chief Abimbola Aboderi. We That's appreciate great. your time and happy Democracy Day. Same to you. <laughs> God you. bless you. Thank, thank you. you. Yes. <laughs>